The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. That winter, Jesus was in Jerusalem for the temple festival. One day, he was walking in the part of the temple known as Solomon's porch. And the people gathered all around him. They said, How long are you going to keep us guessing? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you refuse to believe me. The things I do by my Father's authority show who I am. But since you are not my sheep, you don't believe me. My sheep know my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life, so that they will never be lost. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father gave them to me, and He is greater than all others. No one can snatch them from His hands, and I am one with the Father. Hello. And today, welcome to the northeast corner of the city of Kobe. It's about an hour's drive from downtown, and we're in the mountains here.、Um, it's almost on the border between the next two cities, or、uh, well, three cities actually Sanda, Takarazuka, and Nishinomiya.、Um, and just behind me is Sengari Reservoir, and this is the Sengari Dam. It's one of the oldest dams in the country of this style, built in 19. Uh, between 1914 and 1919,、um, and it channels all the water that goes into the drinking system for Kobe City, or most, most of the water for that. So it comes from here miles away and ends up coming out of my tap、uh, at home or at the mission, which is a, a nice connection to have. And it's lovely to be out here today. There's a few people out walking and enjoying the end of this golden week,、um, sunshine, and the water coming down the dam behind me is very. And it's very it's nice, nice to hear the sound of running water, and it, it brings something of a freshness to the, to the area that I'm in. Now, today, I want to introduce you to somebody. I want to introduce you to Nippa, although the chances are that you already know him. He was a mixed breed dog, half terrier, half something else, and he was born in Bristol, in England, in 1884, 20 years before they. 30 years before they started work on this dam. And he was named Nipper because he would often nip at the backs of visitors' legs. Now, as the story goes, one day his owner, Mark, died, and Nipper was inherited by Mark's brother, Francis, together with some recordings of Mark's voice and a very early phonograph, or what we would call today a record player. And one day, Francis noticed that when he played the recordings, Nipper would run over to the phonograph and sit there, listening intently to the recorded voice of his late owner. And being an artist, Francis painted that scene. And that image became one of the most famous trademarks in the world and is still known today. By the name that Francis gave to his painting, his master's voice. Now, even if it's not completely true, it's a lovely story to imagine, isn't it? And anybody who's ever owned a dog will know that yes, they do tend to listen to and to r e c o g n i z e the voice of their master. Although、well, I say that in the loosest of all terms, because many dogs seem to think that they are the master of their owners. But how about us? Do we r e c o g n i z e and listen to the voice of our Master, of our Lord God? Well, that is exactly what the Gospel reading today wants us to think about. So let's go back to John and look at it. Now, here we find Jesus in Jerusalem at festival time, and he's wandering around the temple precincts when some people approach him. And they start asking him questions. They ask him straight out, Are you the Messiah? Are you the one who was promised? And they ask him that because they're fed up with waiting and wondering and not knowing 
when it's going to come true. They want to know, are the rumours true? Is Jesus the Messiah? And they want to know it now. So Jesus replies and he says that if they've actually been listening to the things that he's been saying or if they've been watching the things that he's been doing, then they would know the answer. But because they have to ask the question, he knows that they haven't been paying attention after all. And then Jesus goes on to explain a little bit more, to expand what he's talking about. And he uses an analogy that they would understand. Sheep and shepherds. Because being people of their time, they would know that any shepherd worth his salt would care for his sheep in many ways, would lead them to places where they could drink and have good pasture. Shepherds would search for any lambs or sheep that have strayed away from the flock and protect them from predators that would be all around them. And more than anything else, the shepherd would protect and give special care to the lambs, the newborn members of the flock, knowing that they were the weakest and the most vulnerable members of that group. The shepherd would know each of his sheep and their habits. He was devoted to them and he valued the life of each and every one of them. And the sheep knew that. The sheep knew that this was somebody who looked after them, meaning that the guy that they followed, because he had a stick and a beard, wasn't just, they weren't just following him because they knew they would get fed, but they followed him because they knew that this was somebody that truly cared for them. So when he called, they would recognise his voice and they would go to be with him because he would lead them to safe places, away from danger. He would take them to places where there was abundant feeding and water and to places that were out of harm's way when the bad weather would come. So understanding all that meant that when Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them, they follow me and I give them eternal life so that they will never be lost. When the people listening to Jesus heard him say those things, they could imagine exactly what that meant from a sheep's point of view. But the question is, did they and do we know what it should mean from a human point of view? Because that is what is important. Well, I'm guessing that we all want to see ourselves as part of God's flock. So we need to follow the example of those sheep who know and listen to and trust the voice of their shepherd. Which means that firstly, we need to think about where we can hear that voice. Probably not booming down directly from heaven, although I will never discount that, but more likely we can hear it through our worship of God, time spent in God's presence, time spent in prayer, when we read through scripture or through our experiences in the world around us and with those people around us. And I think we can also hear it in the cry of the weak and the poor of our world. Because all those things, I think, enable us to identify the voice of Jesus when he calls to us. And through them, I think we can learn that the voice of our Lord is indeed the voice of one who cares for us, just as the shepherd cares for his sheep, wants to lead us to goodness and steer us clear of danger, and will search us out if we stray far from him. But as we all know, it's not easy to recognise God's voice in a world that is full of so much noise, fake news, dodgy half-truths and all of that compounded by the temptation of greed, self-satisfaction and instant gratification. Which means that we need to learn to recognise the voice of God and then we need to learn to keep our ears tuned to that channel, so to speak. 
So I think that our task today and this week and beyond is to make sure that we are listening for God's voice in our busy and perilous world. That we are making efforts to hear it in all those things that we just mentioned, in all those places that we just mentioned. But that's not where it ends, is it? Because there's one more thing that we need to do. In today's Gospel, Jesus characterised who and what he was for the disciples, saying, my sheep know my voice, and they listen to me, and they follow me. The question for us today is, do we know the voice of God in our lives? Do we hear it? Do we recognise it? And do we follow it? And if not, it's time to do something about it. Nipper didn't forget the voice of his master even after he died. The voice that he knew belonged to somebody who loved him, cared for him and made sure that he had all that he needed. I hope that we can be like Nipper, that we can recognise our master's voice and follow him not because we know that treats are coming, but because we love God and because we know that he truly loves us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, open our ears that we may hear your voice, open our eyes that we may see your love, and open our hearts that we may know you as our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.